Tucker Carlson is releasing his big blockbuster movie on Monday. While the kids have been calling for a sequel to Dune, Tucker thought they said loon, as in crazy as a loon. The domestic war on terror is here, is coming after half of the country. They've begun to fight a new enemy in a new war on terror. False flags have happened in this country. One of which may have been January 6th. No Zendaya? Darn. But it is about global domination, I guess, in Tucker's eyes. And yes, Tucker sees himself as kind of a Timothy Chalamet-style messiah. But the comparisons end there as Tucker attempts to whitewash the white supremacists at the Capitol on January 6th. And it gets more sinister than that. Tucker is peddling some deeply dangerous propaganda that the insurrection was actually a false flag operation. He has floated this before. It's a ridiculous conspiracy theory that the government was really behind the attack, but there are plot holes big enough for Alex Jones to drive a monster truck through. Now, as for flags, there were plenty of Trump flags and Confederate flags on display at the insurrection. Former Republican Congressman Demer Riggleman, who is working for the January 6th committee, has said at least seven white nationalist groups were involved in the rioting. Forget universal pre-K, some of these guys at the Capitol wanting universal KKK. But there are other problems with Tucker's premise. Don't forget, Tucker already has rejected the notion that there was any serious violence at the Capitol on January 6th. He said this back in September. You don't see people hiding bombs or using bayonets or firing weapons, trying to take over the country in an insurrection. You see people walking around and taking pictures. They don't look like terrorists, they look like tourists. And all of them, by the way, are American. Tucker has already described the insurrectionists as tourists. So they were just tourists while also carrying out a false flag attack on the Capitol. Sorry, you can't have it both ways. But wait, there's more. Overnight, CNN reported that Trump wants to block congressional investigators from obtaining all sorts of White House records, handwritten memos from his chief of staff about January 6th, Trump's call logs, former Vice President Mike Pence's call logs, as well as White House visitor records, which is a reminder that, oh yeah, this alleged false flag operation happened when Trump was in office. Shouldn't Tucker and his crack investigative team call on Trump to release all of those records so they can get to the bottom of what happened? Let's go, Tucker. Wait, that sounds catchy. Let's go, Tucker. Release the records. But of course, he's not trying to get to the bottom of anything. Tucker is just giving a pass to fringe elements on the far right, which is insane considering all of the extreme rhetoric we've heard just in the past week. There's this recent disturbing exchange a man had with Charlie Kirk, the founder of the ultra-conservative group Turning Point USA. Watch. This is tyranny. When do we get to use the guns? No, and, I, and, I, and I'm not, that's not a joke. I'm not saying it like that. I mean, literally, where's the line? How many elections are they going to steal before we kill these people? So, well, no, I, 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 no, hold on. I, I'm, no, stop. Hold on. And that, now I'm going to denounce that. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're playing into all their plans, and they're trying to make you do this. Then there's Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who appeared to justify what happened on January 6th. January 6th was just a riot at the Capitol. And if you think about what our Declaration of Independence says, it says to overthrow tyrants. We even had a United States senator defending the use of Nazi salutes at school board meetings as a form of First Amendment protected free speech. I counted 20 incidents cited. Of the 20, 15 on their face are nonviolent. They involve things like insults. They involve a Nazi salute. That's one of the examples. My God, a parent did a Nazi salute at a school board because they thought the, the, the policies were oppressive. I did not see that coming. I'm starting to think the problem with Ted Cruz is not that he went to Cancun, it's that he came back. But I digress. The other item that doesn't square with Tucker's premise is that the Trump team was plotting to overturn the election as it was planning that Stop the Steal rally on January 6th. One of Trump's legal advisors at the time, John Eastman, wrote the memo advising the Trump team on how the vice president could throw out state election results. He has since downplayed his own memo, saying the plan wasn't viable. But that's not what he said during an interview on Steve Bannon's podcast right before January 6th. CNN's K-File unit dug up the audio. Are we to assume that this is going to be a climactic battle that's going to take place this week about the very question of the constitutionality of the Electoral Count Act of 1877? 
Well, I think a lot of that depends on the courage and the spine of the individuals involved. When you just said the courage and the spine, are you talking on the other side of the football? Would you be, would you be, that would be a nice way to say a guy named Mike, uh, Vice President Mike Pence? Yes. The only government plot appears to be the plot hatched by Trump and his henchmen to stay in power. But the worst part of what Tucker is doing is that we've already seen what his brand of hate-filled rhetoric can do to America. Like in 2017, when white supremacists descended on Charlottesville, Virginia, and engaged in violent demonstrations that left one innocent woman dead. Or like in 2018, in the mass shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue, or in 2019, in the massacre at the Walmart in El Paso, Texas, both cases carried out by gunmen who wanted to stop an invasion of migrants coming into this country. Sounds a lot like those caravan segments you continue to see on Tucker's show and other programs on Fox. And of course, Trump's big lie reverberated inside the far right echo chamber for weeks before the political violence that exploded at the Capitol. The reason why federal investigators and millions of Americans are terrified by right wing violence in this country is because it keeps happening. And Tucker Carlson is inciting more of it. Tucker is calling his propaganda flick the Patriot Purge. It's nothing more than proud boy porn. And the worst part is that a major corporation in America, Fox, is bankrolling it. Now, Fox is insisting Tucker's manifesto will only be seen on its streaming service, Fox Nation, please. No matter how you slice it, the Murdoch family, which controls Fox, is cashing in as American democracy is being set ablaze. The fact that the Murdoch-run Wall Street Journal just ran a letter to the editor from Trump peddling the big lie again is hardly the worst thing that they've done this week. And that's saying a lot. As the Anti-Defamation League wrote in a letter to Fox executive chairman and CEO Lachlan Murdoch, how many more people need to die? My question to the Murdochs is this. Why are you doing this to us? Why are you doing this to America? You came to this country and built a media empire. Isn't that enough? During Trump, you became American state TV. Now you seem like end of America state TV. People like to say the Murdochs, oh, they're just like that HBO show Succession. Close. It's more like secession. The Murdochs and Tucker Carlson, their primetime pyromaniac, appear to be hellbent on dragging this country into a civil war. Jefferson Davis would be proud.